on to with Constantine and Annie right here in the, uh, in the studios on a wonderful Wednesday afternoon. Mm -hmm. We enjoyed that a bit early on. Wow, they sent a lot of our local talents to Iran to learn all about that uh, puppeteering technique. Yep. That's right. And they get to share it nationwide. They'll be uh, touring, I believe, uh, the whole of Malaysia, uh, one okay. place to another. And, you know, watching that, it, it, it just brought back this one... Um, uh, this, the, you know the whole um, Malay, traditional Malay, um, Malay? Malay yeah. I saw on online, okay, there was this uh, article on it mm -hmm. where they kind of used traditional Malay Wayang Kulit with um, uh, Star Wars. Oh. So instead of calling it Wayang Kulit, mm -hmm. they call it Cool It. <laughs> as in C O O L. Cool yeah, it. it does look amazing because you, you get all these um, characters from Star Wars right. being uh, drawn onto a. a as a puppet. Wayang Kulit. Wow. Right? Yeah, as a puppet. And they really did it. It, it was a combination. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It was a combination of old traditional Malay mm -hmm. culture with, you know, a fusion of modern, modern, modern science fiction oh, stuff. Interesting. It was amazing. That's cool. Yeah. That is definitely yeah, cool. It is definitely a Wayang Kulit. Yeah. Cool. On, the, on the YouTube. Yeah, you, you, you can check it up online. Oh, I'm not sure where it's on YouTube, it but then. I think it was one of the articles. I only managed to see the picture. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. That gives yeah. me another thing to do on the internet. There you go. I'm going to go check it out after the show. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All yeah, right. Well, uh, uh, we're jumping into our uh, next topic, or rather the first topic of and we are talking about the future of education. Now, we did uh, tell all of you, you know, a quick shout out to get you guys to just talk to us about it. What do you think about it? So, our phone lines are going to be open 2282 8578 2282 Give us a quick shout. Now, well, let's welcome a guest. We have uh, into one Ahmad Saifuddin, one Ahmad Razi, Chief Executive Officer of Unita Capital from Lumberhead, which is the operator of Unita uh, International University. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's, it's a nice seat. Right. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, very vibrant, yes. yes. I decided. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I could say that. Yep. All right. All right. So let, let's just jump right in. Tell us <laughs> a little bit about, uh, you know, the whole Unitar uh, capital. You know, what, what do you guys do? And, and know as a university, uh, and in terms of education itself, how do you, you know, how do you change uh, or rather propel our graduates to go into uh, a decent future in terms of education? Okay. Um, firstly, Unitar has a fairly long history uh, within the, ed uh, within the um, education landscape mm -hmm. of Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Um, we've been around since 1997, right? Um, and it's gone through several uh, changes. Oh. Uh, the latest being uh, it being acquired by Equinox, uh -huh. uh, who holds 90%, uh, and and Choraka, who holds 10%. Um, there has been a lot of interest. Um, if if you look lately, um, online learning. Mm -hmm. Unita was a pioneer of online learning in Malaysia mm -hmm. way back in 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 97. And I think there's a UNESCO case study on on this on how online learning was done mm -hmm. uh, from a whole from whole university perspective. Uh, this is something that we're trying to revive because I think um, uh, you may have heard of MOOCs. Um, massive open online courses. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, that, that's a phenomenon that's taking place. Uh, you know, most of the American universities are jumping on that. Yeah. Um, and, and this is, I think, an important indicator of how education should be done nowadays. Right. Because I think uh, the, uh, the students of today is very different from yesteryears. I think I've, I was, uh, what, 25 years ago in the mm -hmm. system. Um, and, and how students learn is actually changing. I think it's very important for us to change as well. Yeah. Uh, and and Unita um, is trying to take the lead in this space of, of how it does, you know, the, the blend between face-to-face -face learning mm -hmm. as well as online learning. Hmm. So you're saying that it, it could be a reality where uh, we have, um, take for example, a student based at home, okay, with a lecturer, or uh, online, okay, let, let's just say they're having a conference and everyone's studying from home, doing it online, uh, are we seeing this happening in the future? I think, well, historically you've had distance learners. Right. Uh, you know, uh, they had to email yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. facts, huge yeah. facts that you had to read. Um, so there was a, a sort of phase where you actually put those facts online. Mm. Um, how, however, I think many studies now show uh, that the best um, way for you to get an, an education is what they call blended learning. Because mm -hmm. if you're left totally on your own, you know, it takes a huge amount of discipline. Uh, yeah. But if you have some homework to do and then you have some face time with people you can ask questions, mm -hmm. that seems to be the best balance. Okay. Uh, so that's the way that we're going. Let's talk about this uh, 
the standard of education, I'm a little curious on that one. Sure. Uh, now, of course, UNITAR being a part of the, uh, rather the operator for the international side of the UNITAR itself, Univ university, um, in your opinion, um, how is the center of learning at the moment, or rather the center of education in Malaysia? Um, okay. it, you know, what, where, where do you see us going? Sure. Uh, I think uh, if I'll, I'll probably talk about higher higher ed hey, um, education, education yeah. because uh, I think uh, th there was a national education blueprint being yeah. released recently. Right. Um, however, that's really addressing the schools mm -hmm. level, and and uh, and I've talked to the ministry. They said the harmonisation between uh, the national education blueprint and the higher education will be done sometime mid next year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Higher education is a very exciting space. Um, I think it's uh, one of the fastest growing segments in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. I think it's worth about 7.2 billion ringgit at mm -hmm. the moment. Okay. Um, it's the fastest growing um, education sector uh, hub in the whole of Southeast Asia. It's actually in Malaysia. We've got more than 90,000 students mm -hmm. from uh, yeah, you know, right. foreign students coming mm -hmm. in right now. I think one of the advantages that Malaysia has is because it conducts it in English. Right. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the countries surrounding us uh, tend to be in their native language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, however, um, in order to ensure that we're keeping pace with that growth, I think there has to be a focus on the teaching and learning mm -hmm. aspect as well, which is why I touched on the online learning. Mm -hmm. First, you have to understand uh, who are the learners of today. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we talk about 21st century learning. You can't do it on you know, a lecture, go some friend, write things and express things yeah. right now. Not, not the like usual classroom. Not, not the usual. Yeah. Right. So there has to be more interactivity. Um, there has to uh, be probably more things like group work, uh, mm -hmm. peer discussions, because that is really what builds up the character of students. Uh, in in Unita itself, from September onwards, we're, we're giving every student uh, is going to get a tablet. You know, once wow. you do a diploma mm -hmm. above, uh, right up to PhD, mm -hmm. you'll be getting one of these. Okay. So we've, we've well worked with our partners on deploying this. In fact, in our university itself, we're deploying it tomorrow. So uh, we're training the students, getting our hardware partners or our so software partners. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a bit of a learning process for, I think, both sides because uh, first is that you can now access learning from here. You don't need huge files that yeah. you need to carry around. Big textbooks. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Well, uh, uh, we have e-textbooks, and mm -hmm. one of the advantages of e-textbooks is that you can search for any word within the textbook, and you can find where it is. Um, By just typing one uh, particular word. Exactly. Mm -hmm. then, then you get all the links. But um, something to be considered is one of the most important, um, if you like, strengths of, of doing things on this platform is you cannot discuss any time. Mm. Uh, so the utilization of online forums uh, on our system connects all our students because we have uh, approximately 3,000 students in Kuala Jaya, but 6,000 students um, around the country. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And we're hoping to open some international centers soon. So, so this uh, particular platform is central towards our approach to learning, and and you know, uh, and and we have to um, ensure that this is not just a tool or device, but it's integrated into how you learn right. Right in the classroom. I, I've got a question. Um, how effective has this been so far? I mean, mm. with uh, your student participating in it. Okay, well, uh, to be fair, we're now just about to revive this. I think okay. in general, online learning um, uh, sort of went down a little bit, uh, and now it's picking up again. I think right. uh, there are issues of connectivity, mm -hmm. because if you want to, to watch video files, it's going to take you forever yeah, and sure. up line. But, but right now, it's like it has improved. It's really fast. Yeah. You know, internet mm -hmm. connections are yeah. amazing nowadays. That's right. Yeah. But, but one of the most interesting things is you can do interactive things. Uh, in the classroom, suddenly you say, Let's take a poll. What do you think? Everybody can just go and start voting mm -hmm. on the tablet. And, yeah. and otherwise, you wouldn't have this instant feedback. Then you can actually display on the screen and say, oh, this is how you guys think. And let's compare it against how other students in the home of Malaysia think mm -hmm. or how students in the UK think. Mm -hmm. So learning gets to be a bit more interactive and contextual from that, from that aspect, which was very difficult to do otherwise when you know, you just have a whiteboard and a marker. Exactly. Hmm. Oh. Well, um, let's talk about, I know, I know a lot of people are touching on the budget 20, 2014. I think that's, that's becoming a little bit of a uh, talk of the town at the moment. So sure. when we look at, hopefully, you know, the impending budget, um, in the education sector, what, what is needed there when it comes to the budget, in your opinion? Okay. So having said that Malaysia is one of the fastest growing education hubs, 
uh, big question is how do we maintain it? Mm. And and beyond infrastructure, because I think uh, uh, you know you can have the nice buildings, you can have good classrooms, etc. Mm. Uh, how do we actually uh, really improve teaching and learning in the class? Uh, so if if there is allocation, for example, uh, e-learning e is just one part of it. But how do we uh, fully utilize technology? How do we fully utilize? Uh, group discussions and and you know if if you think about it, the core business of a university is teaching and learning, mm. and and uh, knowing that students learn differently, how do you react to that? Uh, you know, uh, for example, tax exemptions into really training uh, lecturers mm -hmm. into how to teach new methods. Right. I think that will help keep us sort of thinking uh, in the box. Then. Mm. Exactly. Mm. I, think, I think that's where we're we're having a problem, isn't it? Everyone exactly. is very into the textbook, let's do this, and then finish off your syllabus, and then get into your exams, finish off the exams, and voila, you have your grades. Exactly. That's yeah. pretty much where everyone's going. So you want to get it out of that. Yes. Uh, and, and if you think about it, five minutes after you graduate, how many exams do you take? Mm -hmm. So we have to then start thinking, how do you actually assess students mm -hmm. to be ready for the job market? I, I usually interview lots of students, and you open their CV and you said they've got fantastic grades, mm -hmm. so many uh, you know, clubs and societies that when you talk to them, you know, sometimes there's something lacking. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. So, so how do you build that back into the lesson, you know? Because we can't say, okay, how do I, uh, let's solve the soft skills uh, as a method by doing a course. It doesn't work that way. Mm. You actually have to build it into the whole curriculum uh, and then, you know, get the students to, to give the students opportunity to enhance themselves at every step within, within uh, the, 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 the study period. Mm. And then they'll be totally different people once they go into the job market. Right. Right. That's, that's where we're lacking at the moment. Now again, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the graduates who come out, they're very, very talented when it comes to paper. Yes. They, they mm. have that. They have it all on paper. But the soft skills, that's what's lacking at the moment. Okay. Communication yeah. skills, soft skills, uh, skills to understand a problem without going and referring to what they've put in terms of studies. Mm. Uh, that's something that they can't do, isn't it? I mean, uh, again, going back to exams, if, if you really want to nurture students to think, uh, why not have open board exams? Yeah. You don't have to memorize anything. Yeah. You have all the reference that you want. Yeah. Again, five minutes after you leave, <laughs> you need your way to a job. You can take any book that you want. Yeah. But can you actually communicate? Can you actually critically analyze? Yeah, um, I was just going to say that. Uh, crit uh, critical thinking. Yeah, critical uh, analysis. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what's lacking. I well. think within the national um, um, education blueprint also, that there is an emphasis on, on thinking skills. Mm. I think that's the right way to go. Yeah. But how do they actually implement it within the students? So that's, you know, I, I think in schools doing uh, show, show and tell is a really mm. good thing. Uh, because you, you may have knowledge here, but if you can't communicate it out, sure. it's going to be difficult to evaluate whether you are capable or not. Right, oh. right, right. So, uh, any other suggestions on how we could we could um, uh, improve our students' uh, critical thinking mm. uh, apart from show and tell? Um, really, uh, you know, um, if you go back to ancient Greece mm. uh, and you look at um, how how did the philosophers teach? Mm. I was always about asking you a question. Sure. Mm. So when you pose a question, and this makes students think, and students don't have to be islands, they can work together. Mm. And then you get them to formulate other questions. Okay, this is one question you've done, let's try to answer it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, let's formulate what other questions that comes out from there. I mean, th these are basic tools that I think we've ignored because with, uh, there was a tendency, I think, in the industrial age, um, you know, if, if you look at the classroom of today, it's actually designed almost as a factory. Yeah. It's not a right analogy for today. Mm. I mean, last time you need lots of people uh, to do the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. Now, if we're focusing on creativity, we're focusing on thinking, even the mode of the class has got to be different. In, in Unita, for example, we're experimenting, we're actually designing furniture mm -hmm. for how to learn. Uh, we've got, uh, for, for example, one room mm -hmm. where all tables can dock to a central station, that's where your pole plies and all, right. and you can undock for group work. Wow. And then we have tables that can flip and, you know, you can pull along with one finger, so you can immediately organize yourself into groups of fours or six right, or right, eights, right. 
Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. And it's very interesting because suddenly, you know, the, the movie did Poet Society triggered uh, mm -hmm. in my mind. You know, that Robin Williams, I think he did a, he he did did a fantastic, he did a fantastic job. job. I mean, he sort of showed what you can do as a lecturer when mm -hmm. you pull the kids out of their normal momentum and get them to think out of the box, you know. So, again, you know, if you've seen that movie, you know what exactly we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Thank you uh, very mm -hmm. much, and thank you for joining us this afternoon uh, and also sharing with us, you know, what the entire has in store for the students out there and the people out there. The well. future of education That's in Malaysia. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. All right, don't go away. Quick break coming away. I will see you soon, uh, right after this. Take it away. So it's bye bye from Constantine and Annie. We'll see you soon. Take it away in team.